right, what it is, what it do, and what it look like. It's your boy BQ, Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan, talking a little Impact Wrestling. Over the past forever, when there's an Impact pay-per-view coming up on the weekend, I don't typically review the go-home show, but I've got the time today to do it. So I'm going to run through it. going to try to do it quickly. I know I always say that, and then I'm not quick about it, but I'm going to try to run through it uh, fairly quickly. It's no secret. I'm not a fan of the go home shows. I just I never have been even at the the peak where I'm like, yo, impacts firing on all cylinders. Boom, boom, boom. This is good. This is good. The pay-per-view go home shows just don't do it for me. This is not their specialty. This particular episode. It was OK. It's kind of like last week's. It was OK. I didn't hate it. There were some parts that really weren't very good. And there were some parts that were good, you know? That just seems to be like what the episodes are like lately. So once again, I got to plug the Patreon. Uh, It's brand new. Patreon.com backslash BQ Speaks. You can check uh, this particular podcast ad-free. And anything that gets uploaded to the channel is going to be on there. And there's a lot of exclusive content on there right now. I was out of town doing some military stuff. I was in Florida for a bit. Uh, So this particular month. I haven't really been able to to get on it other than my Rebellion preview prediction show. That is Patreon exclusive. That's on there right now. Uh, The promotion I'm running for this month and next month as well is that the $1 support tier will get you whatever the channel, whatever I upload to the channel or to the page. Last month, it was free. Uh, You had access to everything. Now, if you do the dollar support tier, uh, you'll have access to everything. And that's going to be for this month. And for next month, uh, because then I'll be moving to, well, I'll be packing up for about a month, doing renovations to the house, and then moving to Nevada, getting settled in. So I'm going to pause billing for two months, going to do my best to still do some podcasts, reviewing the show, but extra content is just not going to happen for a couple months because I'm just not going to have the setup or the time to do it. But I will pause billing, but I'll still review Impact. For the most part, might miss a week or two due to moving, but let's get into it. Um, And again, my Rebellion preview prediction show is on the Patreon.com backslash BQ Speaks. Let's get into it, folks. Thanks for swinging by. As always, consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already a value subscriber here at the lounge. So as I said, this was an okay episode. There were some parts that that were not good, and that's, that's the trend in 2023. There's always... Uh, always is a strong word, but there's always been portions of the show, segments of the show that have been bad, 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 bad. And then, you know, there's the good ones too. Um, Kicks off Kenny King representing for team bully versus Frankie Kazarian representing for team dreamer. If you notice on last week's episode, they never really officially put the teams together. They just, you know, they were like, hey, next week, Kenny King versus Frankie Kazarian. Whoever wins gets the war, excuse me, gets the advantage at Hardcore War. But at no point did they officially be like, hey, this is Bully's team. It was just assumed because of the segment. And then here's Dreamer's team. Now, this, of course, makes no sense. Because if you're going to put a match together for pay-per-view, Keep it a kayfabe. There's there's a contract signing, right? Like we know who's involved. There's it's not a, you know, um, I'm gonna switch partners on my own at the last minute. They're they're mystery partners. Like that's not how the <laughs> it's structured. You know what I mean? But but that you know that was one detail picked on last week or picked up on that they didn't actually say who the members were officially. They just kind of it was just implied. So Kenny King wrestles Frankie Kazarian. And this is a pretty good match to kick off the show. Um, I mean, this particular match was not great because of the after, the after effects, the afterbirth. But these two guys is a good way to kick off your show, I guess is what I'm getting at. Now, you know me. I'm going to talk lighting. I'm going to talk presentation to the show. Um, when the hard cam was on today, it looked it looked today. For this episode, I watched it today. That's why I said that. When it when the hard cam was on, I thought it looked pretty good. Still could be a little brighter, livelier, you know, whatever. But it wasn't super dark like last week's episode. 
But then when they're off the hard cam, then it gets dark again. So I'm tired of talking about it. I know you're tired of hearing about it. Uh, but but this match was fairly decent. I knew Kenny King was going to win. The heel always wins this type of match when it's the advantage for hardcore war. I can't think of another comparable match because it's the only one with these rules. But it's this is always a, the the uh, the heel match to win so that the heels have the advantage because it makes no face for it makes no I'm tripping over my words it makes no sense for the heels to be the underdog going into the match. This is not a match at Rebellion that I'm I'm looking forward to necessarily. I hope that they pleasantly surprise me, but I'm not looking forward to it. I I I. I think it'll be one of the worst matches on the card. Maybe it's not. Who knows? I think it is, though. But the match was okay. Uh, there's cheating at the end. And the cheating was okay because it was telling a story. Um, you know, Moose and Brian Myers come out. And I, I thought it was really weird that Moose wasn't on the pay-per-view. Brian Myers, you know, he does a lot of pre-show stuff. But Moose, I was like, why isn't Moose on here? Uh, these guys have been paired up. They just randomly got involved with this. But they cost Frankie Kazarian the match. And then it turns out this is Team Bully. So the good hands are not a part of Team Bully. That makes the match a little bit better. If it was the, the way it was uh, laid out initially, not really looking forward to it. Throw Moose and Brian Myers in there. Okay, you know, this might be a little bit better. The inclusion of the knockouts is cool, but it's really random because Masha and Killer Kelly have not had any, that I can think of, any real on-screen interaction to, like, hate each other. I thought last week's segment, I guess it wasn't a segment, but after the match, I don't even know if it was a match. I just know everyone came running down. I thought that was horrible because they're running out. They're spaced out by, like, five to ten seconds. They're all clearly just hanging out backstage. Masha runs out, but why is Killer Kelly out there? You know, like, it was just all random, random people running out. I didn't really care for it. And then this was like a little bit of that real shit show-ish at one point. Real, real WWE. That's what I didn't like about it. Because we want Impact to be the alternative to that style of booking. And that's, this was like, hey, we saw this on WWE, so let's just get everyone out there. and blah, blah, blah. But I thought it was a nice twist adding Moose and um, Brian Myers to this. I don't have high expectations for the episode. I mean, the episode for the match, but I'm willing to let them prove me wrong. But I thought the whole, the brawl after was, was really WWE-ish. And then it showed on, um, before Impact went on the air, they were playing the Canadian National Anthem and Steve Macklin interrupted. Uh, I wonder if, some of my uh, Canadian listeners are going to have to let me know how how disrespectful you found that. Because I know in America, if someone dis- interrupts the national anthem, like that's pretty that's pretty major. Like that's not that's not something I would play around with personally. So I don't know if uh, you know. It's not to say you don't have pride in your country. I just don't know if it's that like same level of disrespect. If you understand what I'm asking. And Macklin comes out, and I thought he did a really good job talking, and he disrespected the crowd. And then Kushida came out, and they're brawling. And this is just a way to try to get some heat between these guys that doesn't really exist, but they're they're trying, you know. I would be shocked that this match main events the pay-per-view. I'm, I'm fairly certain, I think most people would agree with me, that the uh, – looking for my drink, what I do with it. It's not here. Okay, cool. Um, I think most people would agree with me. That the knockouts are probably going to main event this thing. Then we get, so this was like an X Division showcase. And when I say I don't particularly care for the go home shows, like this is kind of an example of like, what the fuck is this? I don't think they've ever labeled something an X Division showcase. To me, X Division showcase is like, hey, we're bringing out four young talents that we're scouting and they're trying to earn their spot this was more like hey here's four guys with nothing to do let's do something and when they say this is a 
what they call it, a sh- X Division Showcase match, that is AKA, this match means nothing. AKA, there's no stakes. AKA, the winner is not the number one contender for the X Division Championship. AKA, this is the kind of match you just do on a video game. You just have a multi person match for the sake of it. But we get Black Taurus. He was announced by Crazy Steve. Uh, Lince Dorado, Laredo Kid, who is returning. I didn't really know he left. Um, and Rich Swan. I was shocked to see Rich Swan in this match because we're talking about a uh, former world champion. And now he's in X Division showcase mode. That's his status with the company now. They were heating him up a little bit, and I, I thought they did a good job. Black Taurus got heated up a little bit, and now they are back to this, and Rich Swan is competing with the X Division, not even for an X Division title shot, just to do moves. I don't think that between Black Taurus, let's say Dorado, who's only wrestled once or twice on Impact, and Laredo Kid, I don't think their win percentage averages more than 30%. And you throw Rich Swan into that, and Rich Swan loses. I thought Rich Swan was going to win a match. Former world champion, and he loses. Uh, they want to give Laredo Kid the comeback victory. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm sorry if I don't have my ear to the streets. I had no idea Laredo Kid was injured. I forgot he was even part of the company, to be honest with you. It wasn't, I, I don't remember it being communicated in any way. So they gave him a nice little comeback win. I don't know what for, what this match was set up to do. I think it was probably, if you went to the actual taping, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the opening match and they were just trying to get people fired up. Now, the match itself was fun. They did a lot. I'm not always a big fan of these kinds of matches because it's choreographed, it's spot for spot, it's cooperating with each other, you know, dance by the numbers. I'm going to stand outside, wait for you to jump off the top and land onto me. And you know, okay, that's that just not my my style of wrestling, but it doesn't mean that I don't res, uh, respect what they did and I don't recognize that they had a good, fun match and they did some things that we haven't seen before. My big takeaway was Black Taurus is amazing. This guy impresses me every time he goes out there. He doesn't win a whole lot, but he doesn't necessarily look like bad in defeat, you know, but he's... He pulls out some moves, and I'm like, yo, this arsenal that this guy has. And I appreciate it so much because, you know, I I know I talk week in and week out about the finishers and the moves and having cool names or not having cool names, you know? There's not a lot of moves on impact that that stand out. They're like, I wouldn't see this anywhere else. They don't stand out to me like, I wouldn't see this move somewhere else. But Black Taurus has a very unique style of offense and everyone just looked um looks pretty good it, it was uh the, the spanish fly at the end is impressive it's kind of a silly move because it takes a lot of cooperation uh but but overall it was fun it's just that the match didn't necessarily mean a whole lot maybe it does later but not one of these people are on the pay-per-view not even rich swan so i mean i don't i just don't understand i get i get really upset with how um Rich Swan. Ever since Rich Swan was a world champion, I get I just I have really disliked the way they handled him. What do we get after this? Ace Austin and Chris Bay talking about the Motor City Machine Guns. That is that's what it was. Um Rosemary. <laughs> Excuse me. This this show is going okay at this point. And then is the part that drags down the show every single week. And it's the Undead Realm shit, and it's the Death Dolls, and it's the Coven, and all that. This is consistently the worst part of the show. Maybe if you break these teams apart from each other, there's some saving it, you know? But as far as this actual feud, I don't think the majority of the fans enjoy it. And. This wasn't very fun for me to watch. I did low-key find it hilarious, though. And I mean hilarious. When Jessica said, okay, so we're going to go in there, right? And Rosemary's like, there is no we. There's just we. 
and point, <laughs> points at herself. Um, I thought that was like really good. I don't know if you call it dry humor, tongue in cheek, whatever. It was it was very, very funny to me. I thought that was hilarious. I had to rewind it just because I found it funny. So Rosemary tries to go in the coffin and it's solid. You cannot get in there because of Taylor Wilde's magic. All right. Ooh, spooky black magic. And then we get Taylor Wilde versus Jessica. Um, what I've been saying about Rebellion. I'm going to do another upload about Rebellion. It'll be here on the channel, the Patreon, but the channel as well. I'm going to get into detail about what I think of Rebellion. Not, I'm not giving the predictions. I've already done that. But I question if this pay-per-view is going to deliver or not. There are a lot of rematches. We are getting one-on-one -on -one matches of all of you. Everyone's fought each other. There's no, like, Tom Hatterfin would say, first time ever matchup. We're not getting that with, at all. Not a single time on this card. I guess Steve Mackin versus Kashina one-on-one is typically, I mean, uh, technically. But there's nothing fresh on this entire card. We've seen Kylan King versus Rosemary, and now we're getting Taylor Wilde versus Jessica. And then we're going to see them wrestle again. It wasn't fun the first time. It's not going to be fun this time either. The pre-show, which also features Heath and Rhino versus Champagne Singh and Shira. This could be the worst pre-show they have done in, in a really long time. This is not the pre-show that's going to like get people to buy the show. There's some people who don't like championships being defended on the pre-show. I disagree. I wouldn't defend like the X Division Championship, but the knockout tag team titles is good for the pre-show, the digital media championship, you know, the titles that don't mean a lot because you want to give the impression that the pre-show means something. Um, that other match, though, <laughs> I, I will not. I, I I don't know that I'll be tuning in for that. It doesn't tickle my fancy. It doesn't tickle my dick at all. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. So this match here uh, was, I, I don't know. I don't want to say it was bad. I, I feel bad sometimes saying, hey, this match wasn't good because I can't wrestle. So it's, it's maybe, um, you know, unfair for me to say that because I can't go out there and do what they do. But I didn't, you know, I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was okay. I knew that Taylor Wilde was going to win. And I'm just not feeling this whole feud. I, I brought this up a couple times. The Death Dolls comes out. They used to have this cool entrance with the stomp and the camera shakes. And that's that's cool, but they stopped doing it. So now they just do the stomp. There's no camera shake. It's just a normal entrance, you know? It used to be so cool. It's just not now. It was weird to see them do it without the, Val the Valkyrie, if you will. So, you know, but there was a point in this match where Havoc was blinded by the magic and the, the tarot card came into the ring. I mean, I'm just not, not digging it. Here's something I did dig. Was Eddie Edwards and Alicia um, backstage... They said, you're my, you're my ride or die. I hate that phrase. Uh, my, my old lady watches the challenge, and, they, and the last um, season of the challenge was called like ride or die. And I had to hear that phrase like 50 times an episode. So I just hear that. I'm like, ugh. But I thought Alicia Edwards, well, she looked fabulous, first of all. Why did I use the word fabulous? She looked phenomenal. This was the best she has ever sounded. We're getting her in a heel role. This was by far, because usually she does stuff backstage and it doesn't sound natural. It sounds overacted. Uh, you know, her, her she's got that strong accent, so it just sounds... I, I don't know, like the bad accent mixed with being unbelievable. It's just been bad. It's been community theater. The way she delivered this, the change in her cadence, change in her tone, she even sounded like she was trying not to have an accent. 
was A+. Plus. And then Eddie spoke with his ridiculous green mohawk. But he spoke. I wish he would just wear his hair like that, by the way, just slicked back. When he stands it up like Seamus and it has the green tips, it looks so stupid. But the way he has it when it's down looks a lot better to me. I thought Eddie sounded excellent here, too. Like, he didn't sound mush mouth. He had a nice cadence also. It seemed like they really worked on this. And that's what I've been saying lately is that the Eddie heel turn hasn't worked for me. That he needs to really get with someone that knows what it's like to be a heel and and learn from them. Because his version of being a heel is not a heel and is usually not good. Sometimes it is. But most of the time it's not. This had me optimistic to what this pairing can be going forward. But um, I don't want to speak on it too long but because it was one of my favorite parts of the show i really want to stop and and give it some focus because i thought they both worked extremely hard here to make this sound good i was all for it and these backstage segments for this episode all the lighting was really good uh there's no pink lights you know they look good it looked professional and then we're back to this kind of shit. Digital Media Champion Joe Hendry and Dirty Dango versus Callahan and Angels. Joe Hendry now grabs the microphone and speaks before every match, and I don't think it's necessary. I didn't think he said anything worth a damn. The last time he came in and talked, I don't think he said anything worth a damn. And I feel like they probably think he should address the crowd because the way his gimmick is, you don't want to just bring him out and wrestle. Like, it should it be accompanied with something him saying something but i just didn't think the material was necessarily good um and then you know the design comes out they're kind of trying to redo the ove entrance the old ove um where it shows their faces it's not as good as the ove one i appreciate that they have some different camera angles that they use for their entrance but everybody is really really over the design at this point. Design is not over. People are over the design, but they are not over. I don't know where this is leading. And as I've been saying, I'm kind of out on the design now. It's giving them a really, really long leash, but I'm kind of out on them at this point. Um, you know, Dirty Dango, I tell you, he really could have reinvented himself coming over to impact but instead he is basically fandango fandango but a, it's an extremely extremely watered down version of it. it it's it's a little lazy in my opinion i really think he could have came and and just reinvented himself a little bit and and i don't know sometimes when you do something like that you got to bet on yourself you know, like Steve Macklin bet on himself. EC3 bet on himself. Um, you know, guys like Drew Galloway. I know his character wasn't too far off from WWE during his good run. But, uh, you know, guys come in and bet on himself. And then there's some people who just let me try to ride the WWE wave, what I was doing over there. And that's kind of what Dango's doing. I would not be surprised if Dango is not attacked by um, the design before this match, and he's replaced. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Scott freaking Demore, Scott DeCuck. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they do. I just feel like Dirty Dango is not wrestling on the pay-per-view. You know what I mean? He just doesn't feel like he should be on the pay-per-view. So <laughs> I don't know. This is another match that has and we've seen now the whole match pretty much this is obviously without diener and it's without santino they're probably the ones who are going to wrestle the least in the actual pay-per-view match so they have given us everything they they this is the one semi-fresh match they could have had but they gave away most of it for free i don't even know who won this match um yeah that's right hendry hit An angels with a standing ovation the design doesn't beat anybody. And that's why they're not over. 
because it's all backstage shit. And when they wrestle, they don't win. So how are we supposed to get into them? I almost bite, bought one of their shirts, and now I'm glad I waited on it because now I don't want to wear that shirt. So this is another pay-per-view match that I'm not really looking forward to. Um, I thought when Santino came down, because there's, of course, there's shenanigans. He comes running down. When he brought out the, the little puppet to do the Cobra, I was like, I know I'm just a fan here, but I'm but I'm trying to give Impact credit. They're not going to have him hit the Cobra, right? They're going to tease the Cobra, right? They're going to save it for the pay-per-view? No. Not only did the design lose, but Santino hit the Cobra on Angels, who got pinned. And the design leaves this whole match here looking horrible. But I really thought... You tease the Cobra, and if you're going to do that silly move, do it at the pay-per-view. They probably, I haven't been on their YouTube channel today, they probably think the Cobra's going to get clicks. I, I, You know what? I, I'm willing to bet. I'm going to bust my phone out right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look up Impact. I, I would say I bet money, but I just spent $3,000 on home repairs today, so I'm not going to bet money this one time. But I'm going to pull up their channel i'm trying to do it quickly so i'm not wasting time but because i'm talking and typing at the same time i've learned that i don't know how to spell the word you okay so we're going to youtube and i'm gonna look up impact wrestling and i'm gonna look up their videos and i have a feeling that the cobra is on here i've got, I've got a really good feeling about this so bear with me one sec tasha sealed returns which is wrath unleashed santino unleashes the Cobra. 7.9 thousand views in three hours. So Santino unleashes the Cobra. I knew that was going to be on there because the way Impact thinks it's going to get clicks and it's going to give us pay-per-view buys. But traditional booking in this silly match, like you would have teased the Cobra and then we would pop for the Cobra at the pay-per-view, they already give us the Cobra. What do we got next? Uh, oh, they show a lot of Josh Alexander talking. Um, I'll be glad when when I don't keep seeing Josh Josh Alexander video packages and stuff throughout the show because I started getting a little bored of him, and I think I will miss him a lot more if he goes away and then comes back. You know, and I'm like that with a lot of wrestlers, a lot, lot, lot. And then we get Eddie. Eddie. PCO. And we got this last week too. PCO was on camera. Eddie. I don't know why Eddie, every Edwards, I can't say every and Eddie at the same time. I don't know why every Eddie Edwards feud is him walking around. PCO. Sammy. Moose. Kenny. And then here's PCO, Eddie. It's every feud with Eddie Edwards, yelling each other's names. This is what it was, um, PCO. I, I'm looking forward to this feud being over. I think uh, Eddie's going to win, though. I think you're going to write PCO off TV for a while for this. And then they got, um, you know, Bully Ray was saying that Moose and Brian Myers are officially – uh, joining his team. There's a picture floating around on social media of these guys, and it is the coldest picture that Impact has taken in a really long time. It is really, really cool. I am sure you've seen it, but it's all of them together. Then Giselle Shaw takes on uh, Tasha Steeles. I'm confused. It seems like they were going to get behind Giselle Shaw. There's been a couple times where being transgender and her have come out into the news and it's worked positively for impact. But they don't necessarily take advantage of it because she gets on screen and she loses. And every once in a while, it seems like they're going to give her a little bit of a push. 
and I keep bringing up when she was telling Mickey James, you faced a Giselle Shaw, not this Giselle Shaw. I heard that phrase, that word, and I was like, yo, we're about to get a, a Giselle Shaw push. And she has wrestled twice since then, maybe three times, and she has lost all these matches. She wrestles Tasha Steeles here in an okay match and loses. None of these girls are involved in the pay-per-view. So we're just getting matches on this show that mean very little. I understand you don't want to have too many people from the pay-per-view fighting. We don't want them fighting each other, even though they already have half of this episode. But if you're going to have Giselle Shaw lose, have her wrestle freaking Jordan Grace. Give Jordan Grace a warm-up match before the pay-per-view, you know? Or maybe they're being careful about, you know, you know what? I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't go into this set of tapings and they're like, yo, Dion and Jordan, you are not wrestling. Because we can't afford uh, you getting hurt. Same with with Steve Macklin. All these people in the high profile matches are not wrestling. Probably because they're trying to protect them. So I can get that. I can respect it. But for me, a good go-home show would feature some of the talent from the pay-per-view. Getting a win and getting some momentum. A warm-up match for the pay-per-view. You know? I don't think it benefits Frankie Kazarian and Angels, guys who are part of the pay-per-view, taking L's. I don't think it benefits the match, the matches that they're a part of. So this was okay. What was weird to me was, and I don't know if they're trying to tease, like that Tasha Steeles is still kind of a tweener, but Giselle Shaw had a knee injury. And it's not like the baby face to work a body part. That's more of a heel thing. And even nine times out of 10, when they do work the body part, they don't actually win by doing a move to that body part. You know, they've shown matches. I mean, going back to the beginning of time, Greg, the hammer Valentine just working a leg the entire match and then he loses, you know, but Giselle takes, has the injury and Tasha steals exposes that injury, you know, drop kicks her in the knee, and then pins her. Flat finish. Flat as a fucking, flat as four o'clock. Flat. But I'll appreciate the fact that it wasn't a finisher. It wasn't a roll-up. It was something different. So for that, kudos. Um, Just a weird, weird way to end the match. And then, and that was kind of like the main event of the show. Um, and then, um, of course, they're going to run down the card for Rebellion. And guess what? Hold on to your dicks. We own the night place for about five minutes straight. Is it so difficult that whatever the hell your Rebellion song is to play it on the episode so it doesn't feel like you're promoting an episode of Impact? How is that difficult? Um, but that was ex- essentially the main event of the show. And then we get um, Mickey James out there. Even though I found it really silly, I thought it was a nice touch that they showed the, the fans leaving. Now, they did not ask the fans to clear the arena for Mickey James. I am, I'll am i ask someone who's been at the show, but I'm pretty certain they didn't do that. Hey, everyone, we need the room. Everyone... Uh, Leave immediately so that we can hear, um, so that we can give, give Mickey James the, the room. Sorry, my old lady's walking in. I'm going to have to walk away from the mic for a second. I'm sorry. I am recording. Apparently, I forgot how to put on my headphones. I apologize for that. My office is actually attached to the front door of the house. Weird uh, weird way that the house is set up. So they did not clear the arena so that Mickey James <laughs> could have the room. This likely was done um, 
a while back, and they had it ready in case they needed it. But it was really well done. Um, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to nitpick say it was bad. It was just we know they weren't really leaving the arena for that. But it was a nice touch to have that footage of them doing it. So it kind of made sense for the show. All good. Um, of course, they were leaving to hold on to your dicks. We on the night. That's what it showed. They're trying to be emotional and oh, Mickey James and this and this and in the background. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na 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 -na. This looked really good though. I feel like it was kind of more of a higher definition video, and it was a nice touch of her, um, her in the ring. Had a spotlight on spotlight on her. Gives a speech, and I didn't think she was gonna do this. I thought she was gonna be clear. I thought she was gonna wrestle. Like surely they're not gonna not clear both of them. Um, but now we're getting this match, which thank God these two girls deliver because we've seen them fight four times already. Uh, you know, Tom Hannafin. There are no first time matchups on this pay per view. So I would imagine it's going to main event the show. I know this is fantasy booking, but if there was ever, if they, if, if Mickey James was initially going to win and close the show, this is one of those moments where you bring Mercedes Monet out to challenge her. It's fantasy booking, but should be interesting. Like maybe this still happens, but maybe she's going to come out to challenge Jordan Grace or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I try not to, make shit up in my head too much, but I can see it. They, they truly need some kind of surprise for this pay-per-view because this, this, I mean, this show has no buzz. No one's talking about it. No one. <clears throat> I've talked to several people who didn't even know rebellion was this weekend. I didn't know it was this weekend until I saw a graphic on Monday. There's zero buzz. So something has to happen at this show for there to be a talking point because unfortunately, Steve Macklin being world champion and Deanna or Jordan being knockout champion is not going to do it. That's not going to make the headlines that they need. So they do need something. They need someone to show up at this pay-per-view to get people talking. Because otherwise, if you're just putting on a good show, no one's going to be talking the next day. But the Mickey James speech was good. It was passionate. And, I, you know, I saw her in person last week last friday <clears throat> and i asked her if she was going to wrestle i didn't know if she was kate faving me or, or what but she's like I, I don't know yet and it's it's possible she actually didn't know that they just had this um waiting in the you know waiting in the in, in the in the vault in case they needed it and if they didn't need it there's probably another match that they had recorded we'll probably get that for the, the main event Monday or something like that. So Mickey James is not going to wrestle. She almost acted like as if she was retiring. We don't know for sure. I would imagine because she wasn't like, hey, I'm going to come back and get my title, you know. But as I keep saying, if there's a chance they can get her versus Mercedes, they're going to do it. It's the biggest match Impact can do that will draw money, get eyeballs. So. <clears throat> Um, man, I really wouldn't be surprised if we see Mercedes show up and beat whoever won, whoever wins a knockout title. I wouldn't be surprised if she takes that title just so she can defend it against Mickey. I would not be surprised. That is a very impact thing to do. But this was a good way to end the show. It's disappointing because we thought, I mean, I think most of us thought she was going to wrestle. And uh, she's clearly not, unfortunately. So we'll see. You know, we'll see if she comes back, when she comes back, and, and what they're going to do. I can't imagine her career's going out like this, though. No, without a farewell match and all that. I don't see that happening. It was a nice touch showing Jordan and Deanna watching, and I had to laugh at the end because Jordan is just staring a hole through her and Deanna's smiling at her. Um, so that, that was really well done. But it just looked good, sounded good, awesome. And that always, you know, gets my nipples hard when things look good and sound sounds good, you know? So that's it. That is going to do it. I'm only I only spoke for about five minutes shorter than I typically do when I'm reviewing Impact. But we've got Rebellion this weekend. 
we'll see how it is. I'm going to uh, review the show. Hopefully it exceeds expectations. So I will get a little more content your way here very, very soon before Rebellion. But that's going to do it for me. I'm your boy. I'm BQ. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>